Hey, what's up? My name is Lucas. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of West Michigan. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about why I bought a Leica SL2 after using the Leica SL2S. Now, I do have the SL2S as well, and I've always planned on having both of them, but I bought the SL2S first because of its video features and low light capabilities. But then after using it, I knew even more that I picked the right system because the SL2 is the perfect big brother, I guess you would say if you're talking sensor size, but these are a great pair together and I, I really enjoy using them. There's a few reasons why I ended up picking up a SL2 instead of a second SL2S. One of them is to have the flexibility of having that bigger sensor. Um, it's 47 megapixel sensor and it really is beautiful. I did get the SL2S first because I find myself in a lot of low light situations and I felt like the lower, smaller 24 megapixel sensor on the SL2S would be a little bit more beneficial to me. But after using this SL2, it definitely is not a great low light camera but it is a beautiful complement to the SL2S. Now this one shoots 5K video and 47 megapixel images, which is awesome. I scan my own film at home with a camera and to have the ability to use the SL2 as a camera scanner is awesome. Then you throw in multi-shot and it's, I mean, huge files with a lot of latitude and it's really, really nice and I've enjoyed the results a lot. And so the larger sensor, also having something, uh, I've never personally owned a 47 megapixel camera. And so it's really nice to have that ability to crop and post for photos. As a hybrid camera, it's also really, gr really good. It's not as good as the SL2S. So if you are predominantly a video shooter, I think that the SL2S would be your best shot. But as a hybrid shooter, I really enjoy having both. Next up is because it can shoot 5K video. I don't use the 5K much because it does a 4.3 crop, which is growing in popularity, but it does crop down on the sensor. So I max it out at 4K when I'm shooting full frame video. And it's really beautiful. I mean, everything that I love about the SL2 is in the SL2S, but the SL2S just has a few more features that kind of make it a much better video camera, especially with the added benefit of being able to shoot 422 raw external ProRes in a external recorder. But with the SL2, you are getting a beautiful camera. It's 10 bit for, for, I don't, internal 10 bit, which is awesome. Very, lots of latitude, and it's a great B video camera, in my opinion, which is funny because I feel like a lot of people view this as an A cam um, in the lineup. But for video specifically, I think I'm going to keep the SL2S as the A camera and SL2 as the B camera. The next thing that I love about this camera system is that they are the exact same bodies. The, um, the buttons are in the same spot. The only difference visually between these cameras is the SL2S has white Leica on it and uh, on the top by the serial number. I love that. The When you're using two cameras that are in sync with each other and they're the exact same layout and they feel and look the exact same, there's that is great. And they do just a little bit of different things. I really love that. Now, I'm going to call out Canon on this one because it's kind of like I compare the, R5, or the SL2 to the R5 and the SL2S to the R6 a lot or the R6 Mark II, which, by the way, the majority of that update should have been a firmware update and everybody who has an R6 should be getting that. But that's just another reason to love Leica, I guess, because they do stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, when you're working with two different camera bodies, but they feel like one, that's uh, really special. And I really, really enjoy that. And I'm thankful for that in this system. The uh, other thing is using a camera cage on these I currently only have one cage because I'm testing out one by Aitzen and it's 
fine. I I mean, it's the only one on the market, but I did reach out to Condor Blue and it looks like they might be working on a cage in the future. So I'm excited to see what they come up with for these cameras. Ultimately, just excited that more companies are starting to build more accessories for this. I will share my camera build uh, setup in a later video, but that is coming soon. So yeah, those are the reasons that I ended up picking up a Leica SL2. And who do I think this camera is for? I think this camera is for people who are into photography, uh, want those high megapixels, and they are okay with spending the like a price tag. I also think it's for people that are dabbling in video, not necessarily the main thing that they want to do with their camera, but I also think it makes a great companion to a Leica SL2 in, on a video shoot. I just rented the Leica 50mm SL uh, Sumicron lens and it was, I, I tried it with both of them and it's beautiful. I had never tried a prime Leica lens from the SL system before and that is a game changer. I'm going to need to figure out a way to add some of those to my kit because that is really where this shines. But ultimately, I love having the flexibility of adding my M lenses to the SL2 and the SL2S. So a lot of overlap with these cameras. Um, they do a lot of the same things. The SL2S just does a few things better, um, low light and video performance. And the SL2 does a few other things better, which would be higher megapixels and photography. So I love both of them. I think they're a great pair. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I think if you're interested more in video, you should get the SL2S. And if you're more interested in photography, you should get the SL2 if your budget allows for it. So that's just about it. If you made it to this point, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.